Is modest really hottest? Hey guys, welcome back to our series on intimacy killers or our series on how to kill a thing that not a lot of us have right now because of COVID-19. It's been almost a year of distancing and isolation and strangeness. We are created to desire and to need close relationships and without them, we're having a pretty tough time. We've had to find new ways to invest in our relationships and in the people in our lives. But just because the world is strange and things are different, doesn't mean we're allowed to take a back seat on relationship, on intimacy. I don't know about you, but I get really tempted to just kind of hit pause. <laughs> hit pause on all my friendships and say, okay, once the world is normal again, then we'll all be friends again and we can hug each other and it'll be great. I'm hesitant to put in the work that it takes to build a quarantine friendship. But that's no excuse. Friendship isn't something we can sit on a shelf and then grab it again. We need to pursue intimacy. We need to pursue relationships in this season now more than ever. These are all things you know. These are all things you understand. But as we talk about intimacy killers, I want to make sure we have a good understanding of why intimacy is so important right now. This week we're talking about immodesty, and that's a pretty big jump from last week to this week. I don't know any series that goes from sexual immorality one week to immodesty the next week. I was a little confused at first. But when I took a step back, when I looked at the two topics together, I realized they have a lot more in common than we might think, especially down at their core nature. Last week, Brad talked about how doing anything to hurt another person is sinful. When we have conversations and decisions regarding sex, we need to remember the command to love God and love others. We honor God by loving our neighbor, and we love our neighbor by honoring them. It all boils down to the question, am I putting my needs way above the other person, or am I holding them together equally? The same can be said about modesty. We have the opportunity to hurt others without even realizing it. And don't worry, we're talking about way more than just dress code. We wanna keep this big idea of love God and love others at the forefront and not get distracted by conversations about how short a girl's shorts are allowed to be. Let's pray and take a look at what it means to be immodest and what the Bible wants us to clothe ourselves with instead. <laughs> Father God, we thank you so much for the gift of relationship that you created us not to be alone, but to be together in unity. And we know that looks weird right now, but Father, we ask that you would help us pursue intimacy with those around us, that you would keep our eyes open for what is killing relationship and what is building relationship. Bless us tonight as we learn. Bless us as we take a good look at ourselves and not with judgment against other people, but at ourselves. May you say what you need to say to us. May we have ears to hear. In your name we pray. Amen. So our passage today comes from Colossians 3. I'm going to use a big old youth group Bible to read it to you. Since God chose you to be holy people whom he loves, you must clothe yourselves with tenderhearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. You must make allowances for each other's faults and forgive the person who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. And the most important piece of clothing that you should wear is love. Love is what binds us together in perfect harmony. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule your hearts. For as members of one body, you're called to live in peace and always be thankful. When I first read this passage, I was kind of confused as to what it had to do with immodesty. I mean, yeah, it has the word clothe in it, but if we're just clothing ourselves in mercy and kindness, we have a problem. So I decided to take a step back. What actually is immodesty? It's a word we throw around all the time. We are a word that we are told from grown-ups and adults, but what does it mean to be immodest? And according to the dictionary, or according to Google, the dictionary, immodesty is lacking humility or decency. 
it's all about selfishness. When we lack humility and decency, we are putting the needs of others way lower than ours. This can look like arrogance and rudeness and self-importance and aggressiveness and vanity and the complete opposite of the holy wardrobe described in Colossians 3. Immodesty places ourself at the center of our universe. When we do that, it's pretty hard to build intimate relationships. Maybe a story will help you kind of contextualize this idea of selfishness and immodesty. So I've kind of had a roller coaster of social interaction, I guess I'll say. Sometimes I'm good at talking to people making friends. A lot of the times I'm really bad at talking to people making friends. Most of the time I'm in the middle. And kind of the worst lows for me were end of high school, beginning of university. I just did not know how to build friendships, intimate or otherwise. So I developed kind of this trick. I, in order to build conversation with people and make connections, I would be that person who made a lot of sarcastic comments, was kind of snarky, had a lot of little competitions with people, little rivalries here and there, a lot of teasing. I was like that person. And it kind of worked. I was able to hold conversations with people, which was a miracle for me. I had inside jokes with people. I was able to kind of laugh and tease with some other people. But that was kind of it. It's really hard to take a relationship built on teasing and rivalry to a friendship built on mutual trust and sharing what's on your heart. I was not approaching these relationships with a wardrobe of love or gentleness or kindness. I kind of put on this selfish, immodest coat of self-importance in order to hide what was underneath, which was a lot of insecurity and a lot of fear. I think a lot of us think that selfishness comes from a place of, oh, I think I'm the best person ever, so I deserve all the attention. I deserve all the attention on me. But a lot more than we think, selfishness comes from a place of, I think I'm nothing. How do I get people to notice me? How do I get people to care that I exist? That's when we put our needs above others because we feel like if we don't do it, no one else is going to. And modesty is usually born out of insecurity. We think it's the only way we can receive attention. That may look like a picture on Instagram showing a lot of skin, or it might look like making fun of the weird kid in order to get your friends to laugh. Whatever it is, it's not what God desires of us. I do want to take a moment to talk a bit about immodesty in the terms of how we present ourselves visually. Because I think I'm contractually obligated to talk about clothing in a sermon on immodesty. Don't want to get in trouble there. Unfortunately, because a lot of double standards in our culture, girls are always the focus of immodesty talks, which sucks and is frankly really irresponsible because guys are just as susceptible to immodest behavior as girls. A shortlist gym pic can send the exact same picture, exact same message as a low cut top. Both pictures force us to ask the same question. Why? Why are we choosing to dress the way we dress? Why are we choosing to post what we post? What are we trying to communicate? Am I sharing something online about my life to tell people about what's going on? Or am I sharing something online to make sure it gets more focus and more attention than the next person on someone's feed? You know how you can tell a lot about a person based on what they post on Instagram? Like take Brad or Leah. You take one look at their page and you know exactly what is most important to both of them. They're boys. But what does that say about an account that's like 50 to 80% selfies? What does that say about what that person values, what they consider to be most important? Then there's a question of how what we communicate impacts our relationships with others. Dressing immodestly does the same thing to relationship that my snarky comments did to my relationships. It undercuts the opportunity for something deeper, for something more. My words meant that a friendship could only get as far as a playful rivalry. When we're getting dressed, when we're choosing how to present ourselves to the world, it's about attention, right? It's about how we want people to see us and what we want them to know about us. And when we're dressing immodestly, we're communicating. 
You may intend for your outfit or your presentation to be directed at one or two maybe special people, but it's available for the world to see. And unless you're ready to start building those relationships or having those conversations with most of the people who see you, maybe you want to rethink what you're wearing or posting on Instagram. Again, girls and guys. Shirtless gym pics make me very uncomfortable. And so do provocative beach pics. It's strange, it's weird. Now, I never ever want to say that dressing a certain way, our communication with how we present ourselves is an excuse for any sort of assault or any sort of unwanted and inappropriate physical approach. That is not the case. There is no excuse for assault. You are never asking for it. But what we wear is a form of communication. It contributes to how relationships are formed and it can have a negative impact on intimacy. Immodesty in our presentation can communicate that physical intimacy is high on our priorities in a relationship. It can lead to maybe a quicker approach to physical intimacy when starting a relationship. But like we learned last week, physical intimacy is only one piece of what it means to be in relationship. It's not the final goal. When we start with physical intimacy as the base of our relationship, we bypass so many wonderful aspects of what it means to be in partnership with someone. Things like friendship and commitment and security and unity and mutual trust. There aren't any shortcuts to these things. It takes time and trust. When we're immodest in our behavior and in our dress, it's like we skip ahead in a relationship. It's like a false intimacy because we think we're a lot closer to the person than we actually are. It's kind of like using a calculator to do your math homework. Yeah, you'll get a bunch of the answers right, but if you can't show your work, you're going to be in a lot of trouble when the test comes. Don't skip ahead in building relationship. It's too important. Take the time to clothe yourself in mercy and kindness and patience and love. If you really care about building intimacy with someone, start off on the right foot. Immodesty not only communicates that we are the center of our universe, it communicates that God is not. We've been talking a lot about the love others piece of love God, love others. But I think we need to remember that love God comes first in that equation. It's he that should be at the center of our universe because he made it. When we place God first in our life, when we get our priorities straight, it becomes a lot easier to love others because we have a pretty great role model right in front of us. It's like we see back in Colossians 3. It says, and let the peace that comes from Christ fill your hearts. Peace that comes from Christ, what we see ahead of us when we love God first. And Jesus just isn't giving out peace. We read elsewhere in the Bible that Jesus is love, is truth, is hope, is life. When we clothe ourselves, we're not just supposed to clothe ourselves in the worldly, generic expression of patience and kindness and sharing and hope. We have access to a love that is alive. Love that died for us. Mercy that forgave the sins of the world. Hope that is eternal. This is what we are to clothe ourselves in. This is what fuels our lives as Christ followers. This is how we love God and love others. These verses follow just after our Colossians passage. Let the message about Christ in all its richness fill your lives. Fill it. Teach and counsel each other in relationship with all the wisdom he gives. Sing praises and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. And whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. Amen. Can I get an amen out there? That's what it's all about, right there. That is how we build healthy relationships. That's how we foster intimacy, by receiving the living love, the living hope, the living truth, the life that is before us when we put God first in our lives. This probably wasn't the immodesty talk you were expecting, but I hope it's the one you needed to hear. A lot of us can think, oh, I don't wear too revealing clothing, so I can skip this one, it's not for me. 
but the selfishness of immodesty affects us all. Self-centeredness kills intimacy. It stops us from building relationships built on trust. Yeah, it can be easier and faster to take shortcuts in forming friendships or romantic partnerships, but the easy way is hardly ever the good way. Just think about Jesus' parable of the wise and foolish builders. The foolish man built his house in the sand. He took shortcuts. He didn't care about starting on the right foundation. He just wanted it done quickly and in a nice location. And the moment things got tough, his house fell down. Be like the wise man. Start on a solid foundation. Build your relationships properly. Use the incredible living tools of Christ's love and mercy and hope and truth. So that when the storms of life come, be they misunderstandings or hurt feelings or global pandemics, your relationship can stand firm. To build intimacy, you must clothe yourselves with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, and gentleness, and patience. To build intimacy, make allowance for each other's faults. Forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. And above all, in order to build intimacy, clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you're called to live in peace. And always be thankful. Let's pray. Father God, we are thankful. We are thankful for the living tools that you have given us upon which we can build our relationships and build our lives. Lord, help us to see the places in our lives where we are the center of our universe. We confess that we have been putting too much focus on our needs and not on the needs of those around us. God, may we surrender this self-centeredness May we surrender our lack of humility and decency and instead place you at the center of our universe. God, may you open our eyes to the relationships around us. May we see where they are built on strong foundation and where they're kind of built on the sand. May we learn from you. May you, the good builder, build intimacy in our relationships. But above all, may we love you as we love others. In your name we pray. Amen. God of creation, there at the start, before the beginning of time. With no point of reference, you spoke to the dark and fleshed out the wonder of And as you speak, a hundred billion galaxies are born in the vapor of your breath. The planets form. If the stars were made to worship, so lie. I can see your heart and everything you've made Every burning star, signal fire of grace If creation sings your praises, so will I or void For once you have spoken All nature and science Follow the sound of your voice Whoa. And as you speak A hundred billion creatures Catch your breath Evolving in pursuit of what you've said If it all reveals 
to nature so alive I can see your heart in everything you say Every painted sky, a canvas of your grace If creation still obeys you so alive stars were made to worship so alive if the mountains bow in reverence so alive if the oceans roar your greatness so alive for if everything exists to lift you high so alive if the wind goes away so alive If the rocks cry out in silence So alive And if the soul of all our praises Still falls shy the one 